everyone and welcome back to a couple books. This is Couple as per usual. Today we are going to be uncovering my newest read which is Stuart Turton's The Devil and the Dark Water. With that we're going to get into this spoiler free review. I'm super stoked. You're super stoked. Let's get started. Okay. So this is a very jam-packed book with a lot of things going on in it and I wanted to talk about it with you guys a little bit and hopefully convince you guys to pick up this book because I absolutely loved this book. So let us first get started in what is generally happening in this book. There are a lot of moving parts and a lot of moving characters in this book which is part of the reason I loved it because it was very artfully done. But we are set in 1634 I do believe. They are aboard the Sarah Dom, which is a ship that is part of the United East India um, Company, which is a trading fleet, and these guys are like pretty much super powerful and they control most of the region. And so we are on this big, big ship that is going from Batavia, who, which is one of the trading outposts all the way to Amsterdam, where the governing body known as the Gentleman 17 um, rule over this entire company. Now there's a lot of different characters in this journey and they are all having their own reasons for going to Amsterdam from Batavia. So we have our main character Arndt and his pal Sammy Pips. Sammy Pips, I think is his name, and Arndt are basically a Sherlock Holmes and Watson type character. They're very much based off of them. Sammy Pips is the Sherlock and he pretty much embodies a lot of the Sherlock stereotypes and a lot of his character persona. He is kind of jittery on his feet, running around a lot, super genius, super good at solving the impossible. And then Art is not so much like Watson, he is much more a bodyguard type who's much more into the punching and kicking side of Sherlock Holmes cases. And Sammy Pips and Art work together and they've worked together over like the last five years. So Solving cases. They were brought to Batavia to find something called the Folly. The Folly was a super, super secret device. We don't know what it is. We just know it was super important and it was stolen. Sammy Pips was able to uncover who stole it and was able to retrieve it back for the Governor General of Batavia, John Hans. This man is the ruler of Batavia and he is the man who is going to be in one of the rulers and the people in charge on the ship. On the ship. So Sammy Pips and Arndt, they are in Batavia for that reason, but as soon as they return the folly to its proper owner, they are arrested. Sammy Pips is being tried for a crime we do not know exactly what it is, but he is being shipped to Amsterdam to answer for his supposedly heinous crimes. And Arndt, being his bodyguard and his friend, decides to join him on the journey to ensure that Sammy Pips makes it to Amsterdam safely and stands a fair trial. So Sammy Pips and Arndt are both on the ship for this main reason. We have the man who is leading the ship, whose name is the Governor General, John Hans. He is the ruler, pretty much, of Batavia, and he is on his way to Amsterdam for some power adjustment, power pushing reasons, and he is hoping to hopefully gain a more powerful seat in the United East India Trading Company. Along with Governor General John Hans, along with him, we have his wife, Sarah, and her daughter, Leah who are his like like biblically wedded wife, I don't know how to, like his properly like lawfully wedded wife, who he's not so much in love with, but she's there and she's present and they have their daughter together. And so they're both on the ship, of course. In addition to that, we also have the governor general's mistress, whose name I cannot pronounce. It's Chris, Chrisay, Chris, Chris, Crestjai? I don't know. It's really hard to pronounce people. Okay, it starts with a C, ends in an E. And we have her two sons on the ship. And then we have a lot of the party that follows the Governor General in his processions. We have, for example, we have his Chamberlain, whose name is Voss, and we have his the captain of his guard, whose name is Drecht. And then, of course, we have the people who are in charge of the ship, such as Captain Crawls. And then we have the man who's pretty much in charge of the entire ship and ensuring it gets there safely, and that is Chief Merchant Schutten, 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 something along those lines. And then we have the first mate, Isaac Larm. These are pretty much the main characters that you have to know about and these are the main characters that we're going to be following throughout this entire journey. They each have different reasons for being on the ship. Uh, it pretty much falls into two areas. One is you have, are Sammy Pips and you are being arrested and you are his bodyguard and then there's the other reasons which is you're part of the Governor General's party. And those are the, pretty much all the people that are on the ship that are significant and important. 
They all get on the ship, but right before they get on the ship, there is a leper. A leper is someone who's pretty much been disgraced for, from society for a disease that he carries or she carries, and it usually disfigures the skin like horrifically, and therefore they have to cover themselves in bandages. And these people are usually banished and exiled from any kind of city or any kind of establishment for fear of them spreading their disease. They see a leper who is standing on the cargo that's about to go into the ship, and this leper says that they are going to basically die at sea, and that there's like a murder plot at play here, and that it's all messed up. And then the leper bursts into flames. It's very dramatic, very scenery, and very kind of mood setting for the tone of this book and where it's going to go. And that is pretty much where we hit off the get-go. And then pretty much they get on the boat, and there is a lot of crap that goes down. There's a lot of moving parts going on in this story, but basically we are introduced to a lot of character past stories as a lot of dark, evil, demonic crap goes on on this boat, and it's very mysterious and very interesting, and basically we are following this eight-month voyage as they attempt to get to Amsterdam while all this crazy, crazy, crazy crap is going on, and it's very unclear who's responsible, if it is a demon, if it is someone else pu pulling strings, we don't really know exactly what's going on. We just know that we're not being told the whole truth and that at the end of the day, someone's going to die on this boat most likely and it's going to be not a good time when it happens. There's a lot of other things going on in the story, but for the sake of spoilers, I think it's really best to go into the story knowing as little as possible. So really all you need to know is that there's a whole bunch of important people on a boat who are heading all to Amsterdam, and there's gonna be some demonic, scary crap going on on this boat, and we need to figure out who's causing it to happen. That's pretty much the summary of it that I can give you without giving away too much. It is an excellent story. I loved it, first of all, for the, its atmosphere. The atmosphere in the story was fantastic. I was kind of creeped out. I legit was like getting chills every now and again. It wasn't exactly a super scary story. This is not something I would necessarily say is a horror book, but it definitely had moments where I was like, okay, that's icky and gross and I need to go into another room right now. And there were definitely moments where I had to like slam the book shut and just be like, okay, that happened. And there's a lot of character moments. There's a lot of character growth. The characters I really felt for, like there were many, many times where I was rooting for specific characters to get together or to not be together. I was really rooting for specific of characters to die or not to die like there are so many points in this story that you really feel invested with the characters themselves so atmosphere is great characters are great writing of course Stuart Hirschman if he proved anything with his first book the uh, seven and a half deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle it is that he can write a good story that is enticing and interesting this is nothing like his other book I really enjoyed this one I really thought it was quite good the mystery elements at play are devised brilliantly I was shook multiple times throughout this completely and I did not see the ending coming in the slightest bit and there were so many twists and turns that I really could not have even begun to guess at what the ending was going to be. It was such a wild ride and I enjoyed every minute of it. I highly recommend anyone who's into thriller books, who, anyone who's into historical fiction, even though this is a very inaccurate historical fiction book, as Stuart Turton himself says, it is not historically accurate, but it does definitely give off the type of vibe of his um, historical fiction. If you're into thrillers, pick this up. If you're into nautical fantasy, pick this up. If you are into any type of murder mystery or mystery genres in general, I think you would really also enjoy this book. It was such an excellent book for, like I said, its characters, its atmosphere, its plot, its twists and turns, its shooketh meter, it was off the charts. The only thing I really need to say about this book much more than that is that you always need to pick it up ASAP. I thought it was a great read, I thought it was a great joy to read, and I think everyone should be picking it up ASAP. So. Go to your local bookstore, pick this one up, or drop downstairs into my links down below, and pick it up yours yourselves. I'm giving this 5 out of 5 stars. I think this is going to be one of my favorite books of the year. I really cannot stop talking and thinking about this book overall. With that, I think that's everything for today's video. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed this review, and I cannot wait to see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye now.